Hello, welcome back to my channel. I put out a poll this week asking whether I should make a thrifted fairy godmother outfit or a thrifted snow white outfit. And the answer was a resounding fairy godmother. So I pulled out the two blue uh, bridesmaids dresses that I found at the thrift shop a while ago. Uh, $6 each and there are two of them. My original plan was to make two little Cinderella dresses for my nieces, but they aren't quite the right color. Um, so the new plan is to use one of them as a skirt for the fairy godmother costume after adjusting for the fact that this person was at least six inches taller than me, and use the other one as her cape and hood. So one's going to be chopped up a lot more than the other one. Before I get started, I have to get into my work outfit, so one second. Emmy had a bad weekend, so if you're wondering why she's in a cone, um, she's gonna be fine, eventually, but she has some healing to do. Ugh. Okay. So to start out, I was going to test make- oh, you are in the way, again, on the top of the dress because I have no use for it in my costume, so I was gonna make sure that the fabric handles what I was planning on doing with it very well. And also some extra dog petting. Hemming is not my favorite thing to do, and there's a perfectly good hem at the bottom, so I decided just to take six inches off the top. I went ahead and basted the lining together so it'll stay in one piece when I cut it apart. To accommodate my lack of height, I first drew a line that was six inches down in disappearing ink, and then I removed all obstacles to productivity and drew another line that was five inches down. Um, this is for a one inch waistband. I cut it out at the 5 inch line. This is some sweet seam ripping action right here. I reattached the zipper like a pro and this is definitely my first attempt at it and not the second one. That's just what seam rippers are for. I pinned the original waistband an inch down from the cut edge and I pleated the back of it just to keep the fullness and or was lazy and didn't want to redo the side seams. I tried to stitch in the ditch. Uh, that was less successful than I was hoping and I ended up having to rip it out. and hand sewed the way back of the waistband just to the lining so it doesn't show through on the front. And I removed the basting stitches. I have to say, that was pretty darn good. <laughs> Perfect length. So I'm gonna give it a quick iron and then I'm gonna switch to starting the cape. Okay, so my plan for the cape part is to basically use the bottom of the skirt, um, cut it in half in the middle, have that be the opening, and then I'm going to have cut slits here in the sides to put sort of sleeve shapes in. She's got really billowy sleeves, so it doesn't have to be an exact shape. And then I'm going to use the lining of the skirt as the hood because I don't think there's going to be enough fabric left over from this part <laughs> to make the whole big hood from. And uh, I will source some sort of pink material for the bow. So I spread the skirt out on the floor and it's not actually a bed, despite what I mean when I tell you. And I'm thinking right about here is kind of cape shaped. So if I cut it off here and make this the neckline, it should be pretty good. So I'm gonna slice down the middle next. I tend to use whatever is available as fabric weights. Usually it ends up being my cell phone and the pins and occasionally my iPad. I used disappearing ink to mark out where I wanted to cut the top part off. For the sleeves, I pinned 
and then sewed a very narrow sort of V shape with one stitch at the apex point. This is probably a good point to say that I don't really like wearing hoop skirts, which will come up later. <laughs> I sliced very carefully between those two stitches and flipped it over to make the sleeve. The front edge is curved, so I cut that. I basted the raw edge, especially of the curve. It helps it form the corner without too much puckering if you baste it first, and then I had to hem it. <laughs> Yay, hemming. I did as narrow of a rolled hem as I could, and at some point along here, I did gather the neckline, because I didn't show that part. As you just saw, the capelet part is done, and now I just need a hood. So I gotta make a hood pattern. Where am I gonna find a hood? So now that I was really cold without my sweatshirt, I traced the basic hood shape and then I added, she has a bit of a peak to the back of hers, you know, traditional witch hood there. And I stitched around my tracing lines. When turning sharp corners, I like to add, instead of just going to a point and back down, I add, go to the point, one stitch in a 45 degree angle and then continue the direction. It helps keep the fabric from bunching up too badly. small. But I also have all of this lining. It's the same color, it's just not the same sheen. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is, it's not quite tall enough, um, and the sheen of the lining is different from this. It's really gonna bug me. What I'm gonna do, if you look closely here, you'll see that there's the line of stitching and then about a quarter of an inch away is the surge steam wool. I can rip this out and see if this is a good enough seam to hold it, and if not, I can put one right next, right there. Um, so it should give me a bit more fabric to work with, so I'm going to do that and get back to you. Ta-da! Barely noticeable. She has her sleeves lined in pink, and I kind of just don't want to bother, so I'm going to find an old sheet that I have that's light pink and line the hood with the pink. I took my magical glitter satin left over from one of Emmy's costumes and replicated the shape of the hood and stitched it the same way. It wasn't very exciting. And then I stitched the two layers of the hood together. My camera battery died, so back to my cell phone now. So the hood lining is stitched to the hood. And I understitched it. It helps it stay under. It's not really a very thick seam, but I'm going to press it and then it's time to attach it to the neckline. Here is your lesson for the day. Always press your seams. <laughs> See how nice and crisp this is and it just wants to lay the proper direction? But if I pull out the other side, <laughs> it's all sorts of a mess. So now you know. I have pinned the hood to the cloak and now it's time to sew. The hood and the cloak are now together. I did use my serger on to make the edge here just nice and finished so I don't have to worry about it. I was gonna top stitch it down, but I, the way that the ruffles look, it's very cute. And I didn't want to ruin that, so. Now it just needs a bow and it's actually like, oh, it's almost 3 a.m. So that's gonna have to wait till, you know, the rest of today. Cleaning is, totally overrated because it just means that I can no longer find what I'm looking for. I have the perfect pink sort of satin fabric for the for the bow left over from my bell thing and I don't know where it is. It's not here. Do you know where the pink satin went? Okay, so last night I finished attaching the hood and I searched it because I have a serger and it's handy. Emmy was asleep for this part. And uh, after a lot of digging, 
a lot of digging. I found the pink that I wanted to use for the bow. I'm suspicious that it might actually be silk. I don't really know though. Um, anyway, I'm going to make the big bow out of this. She has, I was just looking at the picture, and it's probably maybe like eight inches wide. So I'm going to make a big bow and put the clasp behind it. Do you like that plan, Amy? Yeah, this is why all my neighbors think Emmy is a puppy. <laughs> okay, the bow pieces are all cut out. Um, this is vaguely a six and a half by eight and a half square. And the way that I make bows is I sew here, leaving a gap here to turn it inside out. I sew this into a tube to make the pretty center bit. And I'm gonna try and make the longer parts out of this, although if it fails, then I'm just gonna skip it. I did add interfacing to the big part of the bow, just it helps it keep the shape better, makes it stiffer. That f fabric was kind of flimsy. I tried to be a good seamstress and measure the center and then mark it, but it ended up being easier just to fold it in half and mark it that way. I always end up doing what I call a sort of invisible stitch, where it's, it was supposed to be an invisible stitch, but it really wasn't. I then gathered the center of the bow to a pretty shape. It's a very scientific method there. Then I stitched the middle of the long part to the middle of the big bow. Then I used the little strap to hide all the mistakes and the thread tails and, you know, ugly parts. For the cape closure, I took the hook and eye off of the first top, um, and I'm going to use that to secure the two parts that close together. And then I'm going to stitch the bow on on one side and use one of the snaps I took off the skirt to attach it to the other side so it'll be removable. I can't find my scissors! Who knew all of this mess would be a problem? <laughs> oh boy. Oh yeah? Is that what you think about my work? You want me to put this here? Is that better? No. Hey! Emmy! The costume is done! I think it came out pretty well, and I'm gonna go try it on. Oh wait, I need a magic wand first. Hold on. Love it! And I have my wand. The fit is pretty darn good considering what I started with, so I'm pretty happy with this costume. The, uh, I hope the color comes through because this is exactly the color combination that I was looking for. The skirt fits perfectly. The bow is absolutely fantastic. The hood oops, leaves a little bit to be desired. It's, it's what I had. <laughs> so I'm gonna go have some fun. Make some magic. Bibbidi bobbidi boo. I will say, there's two things I'm not the biggest fan of with this costume, is that I had to cheat and use, there's my bun that's holding the hood up. And uh, there's no pockets. The original dress didn't have pockets, so it was kind of a pain to put them in, so I skipped it. But there's plenty of billowy room to hide other stuff in here. But she has some healing to do. Ugh. You are... I just said it. Can you stop? You're being trouble. Go lay down. In your bed. Go on. Go lay down. Just so... I mean... <laughs> you gotta go away. Good girl. Um... And, uh, cut side Emmy. Fits perfectly.
perfectly. 